What is up guys, 70 Savage here. I am extra excited today. We are starting the last big project on the van and that is the water system. So if you are new to the channel, I am taking this van and converting it to a full-time tiny home. I've been documenting the entire process and uploading it to this channel. That includes the solar panels, the entire electrical system, a bench seat, the kitchen galley unit, a sliding bed system that I engineered, and much more. Anything that you see in this video is documented on the channel. So if you enjoy this and you wanna see more of this band build, go ahead and slap that subscribe button below. Before we get started, quick shout out to all of the Savage fans out there. I just hit 2,000 subscribers. That is crazy to me. Just a week ago, I had uh, about 700. So something happened with the YouTube algorithm. I'm loving it. Hope you guys are too. Let's get into it. So in order for this van to be 100% livable, you need to have a source of running water. So in general, my system has a few main components. The big one is the water tank itself, the freshwater tank. That's gonna be a 30 gallon tank. Um, that's gonna essentially store all of the water that I need for everything, including the shower and the sink. Um, there is a two gallon electric water heater here. That is gonna provide hot water for the shower and the sink. And then we have a 12 volt water pump that is going to provide the suction needed to get that water through the system. So the very first step in building this water system actually has nothing to do with the water system itself. Um, I'm gonna build a small cabinet to contain all of these components. So I'm not gonna document that too much since this isn't a cabinet making video. You can check out um, the upper cabinet video I have, the kitchen galley unit video I have, the bench unit that I have if you really wanna learn how to make cabinets. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna build this real quick and let's get to it. All right guys, so here we have ourselves the water system cabinet. This is gonna encapsulate pretty much the entirety of the system. This is what it looks like on the inside. Right now, very simple, fully empty. Obviously nothing's in here yet. Uh, that piece right there is essentially a cutout to fit over the wheel well. We have two holes in the sides, one right there, one right there for water wires. Well, water and wires to go through, hopefully not uh, interacting with one, or, one another. Um, it's mounted to the van via two plus nuts, one little guy right there, one little guy right there, and then there are four screws going directly into the Baltic birch floor. Um, this thing's very, very sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So since I didn't give you guys a in-depth tutorial on how I made this cabinet, I wanna briefly go over how it was made. So it was made very similar to the upper cabinet there if you wanna check the video on that, um, but it's essentially all one half inch Baltic birch plywood uh, and then glue and brad nails, that's it. The only difference with this cabinet is that it does have silicone caulk all around all the seams. Uh, the reason for that is just if there were to be a spill or a leak, uh, I'd have some time to catch it before it starts leaking all over the van. Okay, so here we have all of the major components laid out inside of the container that we made. Um, we have our 30 gallon water tank, the 2.5 gallon electric water heater that runs on AC voltage, and our 12 volt, three gallons per minute water pump back there. Um, so this is just my first guess at what the layout's gonna look like. Now what I'm gonna do is pull this cabinet out of the van and mount these three things onto the cabinet itself. All right, so now that we've got all of the components installed inside of the cabinet here, it is time to start the actual plumbing. Before I get into this, I want to give you an overview of what my water system is going to look like. I designed my van in a way for the water system to be very simple. Um, I wanted to run all of the piping on the inside of the van as much as I could, except for obviously the gray water tank, which isn't going to fit inside. That's gonna go underneath. Um, but the routing of the pipes between the sink, the water tank, the water pump, all that stuff is gonna be very, very small, very short runs and very simple. So this is what it's gonna look like. I have the water cabinet back here with the tank, the pump, the heater, all that stuff. Um, that is going to go to a shower, which eventually sits right here and is the reason why I made this sliding bed system. That's gonna be like a shower pan that has a curtain that attaches to the roof when I slide the bed back. Um, but I'm not gonna plumb for that right this second. Essentially, there's gonna be a hot and a cold water pipe that goes behind that panel right there. And um, once I put the shower in here, I'm gonna tee that off. So besides the actual water tank cabinet and all that stuff, the only other thing that needs water is my sink. So I designed the van in a way where all of the water was on one side. I didn't need to run pipes underneath to the other side. Um, everything is all in this one 
location right here, which makes it really easy. Um, so I'm just gonna run hot and cold water to the sink here, and then a drain to the outside of the van. Very simple, very minimal amount of parts that are gonna be needed. Let's get into it. All right guys, so what I wanna do now is a micro lesson on plumbing in a van. Um, I wanna give the plumbing 101 guide to you guys about fittings, about materials, about tools, um, so that you can go into your plumbing in your van with a lot more knowledge than I had. Um, at the end of the day, it's actually very simple. There's only a couple different fundamentals that you need to understand, um, but I wanna go over those now so that you don't have to scramble to try and understand them and learn them on your own. Okay, so in your van, um, or at least in my van, I ran into three different types of tubing that I used, all for different purposes. Um, the very first one is ID tubing. I'm gonna put that on the screen here. Um, ID tubing is a clear vinyl very flexible type of tubing and that's really its strength. Um, it's great in things like the tight water cabinet here because it can make all sorts of little bends. The second type of tubing that I used is called PEX tubing. I used um, predominantly one half inch PEX tubing uh, and that's this stuff right here. Um, I actually didn't use PEX tubing as much as I thought I was originally. The strength of PEX tubing is ease of connectors and um, it's also pretty cheap. So the PEX tubing also has a red variant and this red variant works with hot water. It can withstand hot water temperatures and that is the primary reason why I used it in my van. I also used it for a very short run of cold water. If you need to do any long distance routing, this tubing is pretty rigid. It's not as rigid as like white PVC that you see at the store, but it's definitely not even close to as uh, flexible as the ID tubing. The third type of tubing is something that you've seen in your house probably. It's uh, typically connected to faucets and uh, water filters, which is exactly the two things that it's connected to in my van. Um, it is the flexible metal laced hosing um, that comes off of a compression fitting. And usually, um, that's connected to your faucet, that's connected to your water filter. Okay, so that covers the tubing. Now we are going to move on to the fittings. Um, the fittings are how you connect each portion of your tubing to either another portion of tubing or a hardware component in your plumbing system. So, there are actually quite a few different types of fittings out there. There's only a few that you actually need to care about. By the way, with all of these fittings that I'm talking about and all of the fittings that I'm using in my plumbing system, at least 95% of them, um, I bought them at the local hardware store. Uh, they're readily available, they're easy to find. Um, sometimes you need a super specialized fitting that's not very popular, um, and those ones you do have to order online. I'll go over those ones specifically. But right now I just wanna talk about the general types of fittings and what those types of fit fittings are used for. Okay, so the first class of fittings that we're gonna talk about are what I like to call pipe fittings. Um, there are a lot of acronyms used to describe pipe fittings, but they, all of these acronyms have exactly the same thread type and they're all compatible with each other. The common acronyms for pipe threads or pipe fittings are NPT, MPT, FPT, FIP, and MIP. Um, all of those fittings are just the male and the female variants of pipe threaded fittings and um, they're all gonna fit with each other. So I think pipe fittings are the most important type of fitting in the build because they're kind of the least common denominator. Um, when I say least kind of common denominator, I mean that all of the other types of fittings typically have a conversion to a pipe fitting. So you'll see when I go into the details of my water system um, and all of my fittings, there are often times when I convert from other types of fittings like a compression fitting or a garden hose fitting to a pipe fitting. Um, so everything can be converted to pipe fitting and then back to um, the other type, but rarely do you see conversions between two non-pipe fitting types. That's kind of confusing. Um, but what I'm trying to say is if you have a garden hose fitting and you have a compression fitting, you're gonna have to probably find that fitting online to go directly from garden hose to compression. But at your local hardware store, there's plenty uh, garden hose to pipe and then pipe to compressions. Okay, so these guys right here are an example of a pipe fitting um, or two pipe fittings. One of them is a plastic pipe fitting with some tape around it and the other one is a brass pipe fitting. Um, so the way that you connect two pipe fittings together, there's one male, there's one female, and you wrap the male with five 
four, five, or six layers of blue monster tape. I put a link to the blue monster tape in the description below, and then you simply screw them together. So a couple of gotchas with pipe fittings. Um, you see here that I have a brass female fitting and a plastic male fitting. That is the way that you wanna do it if you have to go um, plastic to brass. You don't wanna have the plastic being the female fitting and the brass being the male fitting because um, pipe fittings are actually tapered. And if you're putting a lot of tension on this thing, and this is if this were to be a brass fitting and this were to be a plastic fitting, um, the more tension you put, the more likely that the plastic female fitting is gonna crack. So there is one exception to this in my build. Um, but other than that, I've held true to this rule. The next class of fittings are the barbed ID hose fittings. Um, these are always gonna be plastic or you should always buy them in this kind of white plastic looking material. And these fit directly onto ID tubing. Um, in this case, this is a 3 4 inch barb and this is half inch hose, so I can't actually show it to you, but um, there's tons of examples in my uh, water system container here. So. The way that these guys work is you simply push the hose onto the barbed section as far as it'll go, and then you um, install a clamp onto it. The clamps look something like this. Uh, they're simply little metal rings with a uh, screwdriver bit on one side, and you can use your screwdriver to clamp it down nice and tight. You wanna put quite a bit of tension on these, um, not enough to where the metal is deforming on the clamp itself, but right before that point when it's getting really, really tough to turn it at all, that's the amount of tension that you wanna put. The other thing about these ID hose fittings is that um, they always have one barbed side and then they have one male pipe thread. So you're always gonna need a female pipe thread on the end of your hose or whatever you wanna connect this to in order to install a barbed fitting for ID tubing. You're gonna see that quite a bit in my water container. The next type of fitting that I used is a garden hose fitting. A garden hose fitting is obviously a fitting that hooks up to a conventional garden hose in the United States. Um, for example, these right here are garden hose fittings and um, it's gonna make it really easy for me to you know, fill up at any gas station or anywhere that has a, a garden hose available that I can turn the water on. Um, I use garden hose, hose fittings only in the fill location and in the drain location. And it actually worked out kind of perfectly because the compact one and a half inch to three quarter inch reducer and um, the three quarter side was a garden hose fitting as well. Garden hose threads are not compatible with pipe threads. You need to get a garden hose to pipe converter in order to connect those two types of threads. The next type of fitting that I use in my build is the Shark Bite PEX Quick Connect fittings. Um, they have a fitting system that's actually quite well engineered. It only works for PEX tubing, uh, but the way that it works is you just push the PEX tubing into the fitting and then pull it out slightly, and it creates a really good seal that's also really easy to um, attach and reattach at any given time. You'll see that connected to my PEX hoses in the water system. The last type of fitting um, that I used in my water system is another one that you're gonna commonly see on the ends of faucets and on the ends of water filters, it's called a compression fitting. Um, so compression fittings have a rubber ring on the inside of them, and when you tighten them down nice and tight, um, that rubber ring pushes up against the tip of the male fitting that you've inserted into it. I only used compression fittings where it was, where it was necessary. Um, in my case, that was on the ends of the faucet connectors that are attached to the faucet and on the ends of the water filter. So since we've gone over all of the fittings and all of the tubing that I used um, in this water system, I'm gonna go over step-by-step step each one of the connections that I made, starting from the two entry points here and the tank itself. There are four connections to the water system. The first one here is a fill port. It is simply a fill valve. This is a garden hose fill valve onto a uh, adapter from garden hose to pipe onto a little three and a half inch pipe onto another adapter for garden hose to pipe. And then I bought this uh, port right here on Amazon. It screwed directly into the one and a half inch fitting in the tank and it has a garden hose connector on the other side. So this setup, um, right here is actually the same for my gravity drain port at the bottom, bottom corner down there. Um, and essentially this is just gonna be used if I ever wanna park on a slope and drain the tank without needing the pump um, to do maintenance or anything like that. That's what this guy's for right here. The third 
port that we have on the water tank is a, a vent port. This is a half inch male to male nipple. I just epoxied it to the tank side. Um, a half inch uh, pipe threaded elbow, a half inch pipe threaded to half inch barbed fitting for ID tubing. You can see the clamp on this guy right here. Um, and that essentially comes out of the water tank cabinet. Uh, there's a little bit of vertical rise here so that the pressure has to overcome this vertical rise in order for the water to drain. That's gonna prevent my entire water tank from draining if I am parked on enough of a slope. Um, and essentially the way that this connects and actually drains out of the van is it's gonna be really hard to see. And I apologize, the mic is gonna get a little crusty sounding here, but let's see if I can get this. There is a T fitting that this connects to the other side of the T drains out of the bottom of the van. Behind this wheel wall here, there's a small gap, just enough uh, room for a half inch um, ID tubing. And there's a factory drain hole in the bottom of the van. I'll show you guys that right now. All right guys, so we are under the back of the Sprinter now. This is the back passenger wheel right here. As you can see, right behind the back passenger wheel well, is where both the port for my venting as well as the pressure release valve for my water heater um, end up getting ported to. So um, it essentially goes up through here, directly behind where the wheel well uh, meets the rest of the body. There's a very small gap. It's just enough for a uh, three quarter inch outside diameter pipe. And it goes from the inside of my water cabinet down around into here so that I didn't need to drill any holes up through the floor. Um, I sealed it with this silicone, the same stuff that I used to glue the uh, water level sensor, general purpose silicone. Um, so it's flexible, not gonna fall off over time. And I think this is a great solution to let water exit your sprinter without needing to drill any additional holes in the body. So on the other side of the T, it connects to this hose right here, which is the pressure release valve for the water heater. Um, this ideally never has any water flowing through it, and it's essentially only for emergencies when there's too much pressure in this water heater so that it can exhaust. And that just goes to the same spot directly to the outside of the van. The fourth connection to the tank is down there, and that is essentially the main connection. That is uh, a pipe connection onto a 90 degree pipe elbow, onto a strainer to take out any um, you know loose stuff in there, like maybe there's some plastic shavings or some dirt that makes it through, um, into my main on off water switch. This goes into an extra long ID cable that came as part of the silencing kit for the water pump. We have the water pump itself. Um, the other side of the uh, ID cable link attached to the water pump. That wraps back around, comes up to here, which goes into this accumulator tank. This accumulator tank is then attached via a half inch pipe threaded T fitting into a half inch pipe to compression fitting going into the bottom of this water filter here. After the water is filtered, it comes out and follows this metal tube here, this metal compression fitting tube, all the way up through here and attaches to that blue PEX fitting right over there. Uh, there's a compression to pipe and then a pipe to PEX and that goes straight up onto my sink faucet. Um, on the other side of this T, so one side of the T goes into the water filter, the other side of the T goes into the input of the water heater. So you need to add cold water to the water heater. In this case, I'm just adding unfiltered water because it's gonna go through the heating process anyway. Um, it heats the water and then the output of the water heater is attached to this red PEX tubing here. So this is just a pipe to PEX elbow. Uh, I was able to just barely bend the PEX enough to fit around this awkward angle here, but the red PEX goes from the water heater into the wall and then goes into the uh, connection directly to the sink faucet. Eventually I'm going to tee off um, the red and blue PEX right there onto a T fitting and that'll be input 
to the uh, water for the shower, but I don't have a shower yet. So right now it's just a solid pipe. On the output side of the water system cabinet, we have the cold water PEX tube and the hot water PEX tube. Those connect on the inside of my kitchen galley unit um, directly to the compression fittings for the faucet. So this faucet comes with these gray um, pipes pre-attached to it and there's a compression fitting on the end. So I just had a compression fitting to pipe adapter and then a pipe to a PEX adapter and that's how I connected those guys up. As for the sink drain, I'm still waiting on a part in the mail but it is going to get routed behind the fridge the same way as the pipes uh, for both the hot and cold water are for the faucet itself. And it comes out here. You can see I have the pipe in place already. It's gonna go through this half inch ID tubing into this HEPVO filter, uh, link in the description below. This just isolates smells so that uh, the smells from the gray water tank won't come back up into the van. And then it gets routed into the ID tubing that comes out of the body plug underneath the van, which I'll show you in a sec. Looking under the van now, Right in front of the passenger rear tire, we can see a couple of body plugs here. One big one right here, one small one right here. There are also a few more down the passenger side body panel here. But one that we're gonna use for the sink drain is this guy right here. So all you have to do is pull out this rubber plug and you now have a hole um, that actually has access. There's a small amount of space in between the rear wheel well and the inside body paneling to run um, a small piece of tubing. I'm gonna run half inch ID tubing, which has a three quarter inch outside diameter. Let's get that boy hooked up. We have the gray water drain from the bottom of the sink coming out of the drain plug right there on the body panel. It kind of gets weaved around back to cross the van underneath where the other wires and stuff are from the factory and then for right now, before I get my gray water tank, I just have it coiled up right here and zip tied to um, one of the factory mounts on the body. So this is actually a really good way to route the hose. It's staying very far away from the hot exhaust. It also doesn't have any kinks anywhere. This braided vinyl tubing is ridiculously strong. This is definitely the right material to use underneath the van here because there's no way that a rock is going to be able to penetrate this. The other day I tried to cut it with a knife and I had trouble even doing that with my sharpest knife available. So I think this stuff is durable. It's gonna last a long time. All right guys, that covers 100% of the contents and functionality and fittings and materials inside of this water system. So hopefully you guys learned something from that. It is time for the moment of truth. We are gonna fill this tank for the first time and pressurize the system. This right here is a nifty little fitting that I made to attach directly to the garden hose that I'll use to be filling my tank with. Um, it just has its own strainer here to filter out any contaminants or like large pieces of dirt or uh, dead lizards that crawled into the hose that I might be filling from um, and preventing those things from going into my water tank. So I'm going to screw this onto the hose anytime I'm filling up and then this screws into my fitting and that'll just give me um, a little bit more confidence anytime I'm filling up from an unknown location. All right, time to turn the hose on. What I'm looking for here is leaks, primarily in this fitting right here, also in this fitting down here. Other than that though, there's no water in the system. Um, the main water line is still shut off, so there's no water up into the water pump or anything like that. That's gonna be what we test next, but I wanna get this tank about halfway full um, to get a decent amount of pressure on these guys and see whether or not they leak. Awesome, so there are no leaks at the two bottom ports of the tank. I uh, turned off the hose. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the connector that we have here and minimal drippage. Okay guys, I am going to turn on the 12 volt water pump right there. I have it wired up onto my switch panel here. It is this third switch here. So when I flip this, I am not sure exactly what's going to happen. Let's give it a try. Oh, it's gone. Cool, no dripping from this side either. 
still very scary. Oh, a little bit of dripping over here. Okay, so this one right here is leaking. Okay, so as far as I can tell, my only leak is right here on this T connector on both uh, the side with the compression adapter and the side connecting directly to um, this pump. Valuable lesson here, um, this fitting right here that attaches down to the bottom of the water filter had a really slow leak in it. Lesson learned here is you don't want to actually tighten these compression fittings down that much. Um, you can see that I kind of shredded the seal in there and that's from just over torquing it way too much. These compression ones you kind of want to get it like very uh, firmly hand tight and then maybe three quarters of a turn with a wrench. All right guys, so I have some fantastic news. After finding a simple kink that held me up for about an hour in the aerator hose for the sink here, um, we have ourselves some very exciting water power. I just think this is so cool. I've never been so excited by turning a sink on and watching it work. One of the really cool parts about this whole system is that this water pump automatically detects when there's low pressure on the output side. So right now you can hear that the pump's obviously not on, but when I turn the water on, now the pump has automatically turned itself on and we have ourselves some actually very solid water pressure here. Um, more than I would be expecting from a small little 12 volt pump, but um, I could wash my car with this thing. Have you ever seen a car that could wash itself? Word on the streets, there has been a drive-by gardener in town. He's been simply driving by people's houses and watering their plants. What will we do? All right guys, so I am stoked that the water delivery system is working successfully. Now let's test the rest of the system. The first thing here is the water level sensor. This is a CUS water level sensor, K-U-S. I'll put a link in the description below. And all I did was glue it on with this silicone caulk. Uh, this is tube version caulk, so I don't need a caulk gun. Um, but I just put caulk underneath. I pressed it down slightly, kept it clamped with a weight on top and uh, put a little bit additional caulk around the sides and it's holding very securely so far. It has two electrical connections here, one to ground and one to the water level gauge. Those two wires from the sensor right there go up this wall. They follow the same electrical circuit as the rest of the wires in my van. You can check out the electrical video to see more documentation on those. And it ends up uh, getting connected in here to my 12 volt panel. Um, the water level gauge itself is visible right here. I haven't actually mounted this gauge yet, but it is successfully hooked up to the water level sensor and it is currently indicating the right amount of water in the tank. Um, I also filled the tank up, ensured that it went to full, ran the tank down, ensured that it went to empty, and we are good to go. So one of the most complex parts of this water system is the water heater here. This is a 2.5 gallon electric water heater made by Bosch. It gets powered by this beefy 2000 watt inverter. I have wired my water heater to this 120 volt AC switch here. And my plan for the water heater is to only use it when it's actually necessary. It takes way too much power to use perpetually. I'm only gonna be using it when I need a hot shower or for some reason need hot water out of the sink, which should be sparingly, um, because as you'll see, it takes a ridiculous amount of power. Right now, we're looking at the battery monitor data here. We're using 3.2 amps passively. It's probably for the lights, maybe the fridge compressor's running, something like that. Let's turn on the water heater and see what that number jumps to. Now, if we look at the battery data, it is consuming 1,624 watts. That is ridiculous. I cannot run this thing for very long before my batteries simply run out of juice. Um, thankfully, it only takes about 15 or 20 minutes to actually heat up the water, and the water stays warm for about two hours. So it's perfect for my usage, but definitely not something that I'm gonna be having hot water on demand all the time. All right, doing a test right now of the gravity drain. You can see water is coming out. Another cool thing is that the venting port um, that I installed right back here, I put my finger up against it while the water was draining here to ensure that there was negative pressure. Um, and that that port was being used and there wasn't just a leak in the system allowing the tank to drain and there was successfully some negative pressure so really stoked on that vent port it works really well 
All right, guys, so this was quite a video. I know it turned out very long. Um, congratulations for making it this far. I tried a little bit of a different style this time. I wanted to document all of the details and every aspect of the water system. So let me know whether or not you liked that. If you did like it, don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you like my channel and you're not yet subscribed, definitely consider subscribing. I am going to be making more van life content as time goes on with the rest of my build as well as my travels. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.